grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To the community for whom this passage was written, it seemed as though the oppression they were experiencing would never end. Daniel's message is, It shall end. The Ancient One, who is judge, will call all nations to account, and will give dominion to one like a human being, the Messiah. The first reading comes from Daniel chapter 7, beginning at the ninth verse. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The book of Revelation begins by celebrating the Almighty God who spans all of time. Similarly, Jesus is celebrated as the firstborn from the dead who rules over the world's rulers. He is the one whose return we eagerly await. The second reading comes from Revelation chapter 1, beginning in the fourth verse. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? your own nation, and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Frederick the Great rang the bell one day, and nobody answered. He opened the door and found the page sleeping on a sofa. About to wake him, he perceived the end of a billet out of his pocket and had the curiosity to know the contents. Frederick carefully drew it out and read it. It was a letter from the mother of the young man who thanked him for having sent, part, sent, for having sent her part of his wages to assist her in her distress. And it concluded by beseeching God to bless him for his filial goodness. The king returned softly to his room, took a roller of ducats and slid them with the letter into the page's pocket. And then returning to his apartment, rung so violently that the page came running breathlessly to know what had happened. You have slept well, said the king. And the page made an apology, and in his embarrassment, he happened to put his hand in his pocket and felt with astonishment the roller. He drew it out, turned pale, and looking at the king, burst into tears without being able to speak a word. What is the matter? said the king. What ails you? Ah, sire, answered the youth, throwing himself at his feet, somebody would wish to ruin me. I know not how I came by this money in my pocket. My friend, said Frederick, God often sends us good in our sleep. Send this to your mother. Salute her in my name and assure her I shall take care of her and of you. Today we don't have kings. The United States has never had a king, and we question what good they would be. Kingship is the stuff of fairy tales and history books. For the role of king is to be overseer of the well-being of others, making sure people are protected and fed, managing and keeping the nobles happy, and making all the decisions for the country. Today we read from the Gospel of John. It is the account of Jesus' interview with Pilate. Pilate is not a king, he's a governor. He's got a lot of responsibility, yes, but ultimately it is because of the power of Rome that Pilate rules. He's speaking for the emperor here. Jesus hasn't been accused of anything, really. He's been arrested because the religious rulers want him put to death. And they deliver Jesus to Pilate's doorstep because they don't have the power to execute they need him to do it for them. So, Silent, so Pilate summons him and asks, Are you the king of the Jews? And the reason he asks is that claiming kingship of the Jews denies Rome's power and might. It is a crime against the empire. And Jesus and Pilate get into a back and forth with no real resolution and neither of them actually answering each other's questions. Are you the king? Who told you I was? What did you do that people told me you were a king? I am a king, but not a king of this world. Here, Jesus finally claims kingship, but not in the way people, including Pilate, would expect. If Jesus were a king, he'd have an army. He's done all the things other kings have done. He's healed people, he's fed people, he's protected them by making them part of the community and stopping others from exploiting them. Jesus would have been a successful king by the world's standards if he would have kept the nobles happy. Instead, he's turned against the Pharisees, the, Sc the Sadducees, and the scribes. And without an army, there was no one to come and rescue him from the hands of his enemies. And here is where Pilate and Jesus are truly speaking past each other. That Jesus' kingdom is not from this world. That he will be delivered from the hands of his enemies. That God will rescue him from the bowels of hell. Jesus will be resurrected. And this act of kingship, his life, death, and resurrection is how Jesus will protect and care for his people. Not an easy thing for Pilate to understand. The disciples didn't get it. And we miss a lot ourselves. We want Jesus to protect us, to use the weapons of this world to protect us from the evil of the world. And we get mad when he doesn't protect us or bless us in ways we want or expect. It causes us to question his kingship. 
And we forget that Jesus didn't use the weapons of this world. That Jesus is God whose love comes to us in delicate, unprotected, unarmed, defenseless flesh. He is the one who comes to love us without caution, without measure, without concern for our shortcomings, the sins we have committed. He is the one who submitted to the very worst that humanity has to offer, who let the twisted things in us, the sin, the thing in, the, in us capable of betrayal and flogging and violence and vengeance and even murder, and Jesus didn't say, I'm going to get you back. But he said, you are forgiven. He demonstrated radical love for the world. Jesus' kingship is so radical that no one recognized it. Not the disciples, not the religious leaders, not Pilate, not King Herod. It goes beyond Frederick the Wise forgiving his page for sleeping and blessing him with money. We turn to Jesus as king because we are out of solutions here in this world. No one wants to sacrifice for one another. It's all about the individual, putting money in our own pockets rather than caring for others, securing our safety while avoiding caring about others. We lost our sense of community and caring for one another. But if the world were better at community, maybe Jesus wouldn't have sold out Jesus. If the world were better at community, maybe we'd be willing to sacrifice for one another just a little bit more. If the world were better at being community, maybe we would have noticed what kind of king Jesus truly is. If the world were better at community, maybe Jesus would have said, my kingdom is of this world. As we prepare for Thanksgiving, I am thankful Jesus is the King of the universe, the sovereign over everything, the one who has come to save us from ourselves, from sin, and from death. He has promised protection from the eternal chaos to always be cared for, a place of peace and prosperity. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Amen.
Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O Lord, our God, King of the universe, we give you thanks for the many blessings you have bestowed on us. This week we give you thanks for all you have given us, from A to Z. For animals, apples, and air, we thank you, our King. For brothers, babies, and beds, we thank you, our King. For corn and chocolate, we thank you, our King. For dogs, ducks, and doctors, we thank you, our King. For electricians and everybody in the world, we thank you, our King. For friends, family, farmers, fun, fathers, food, firefighters, and freedom, we thank you, our King. For grandparents, games, and God, we thank you, our King. For hands, health, houses, and the Holy Spirit, we thank you, our King. For ideas and intelligence, we thank you, our King. For joy, journeys, and Jesus, we thank you, our King. For Kit Kats, kids, kites, and kindness, we thank you, our King. For life, laughter, and love, we thank you, our King. For mothers, meat, money, and the military, we thank you, our King. For night, naps, and niceness, we thank you, our King. For octopi, oceans, optimism, and oxygen, we thank you, our King. For people, parents, pumpkin pies, police officers, and personal space, we thank you, our King. For quiet time, we thank you, our King. For rain, rules, rivers, and respect, we thank you, our King. 
for sleep, sky, snow, snuggling, Sunday school, sisters, and silence. We thank you, our King. For transportation, television, time, trains, and teachers, we thank you, our King. For umbrellas, unity, unicorns, and the United States, we thank you, our King. For video games, veterinarians, and veterans, we thank you, our King. For water, winter, our world, wind, and warmth, we thank you, our King. For Xboxes, xylophones, and x-rays, we thank you, our King. For youth and yourself, we thank you, our King. For zebras and zippers, we thank you, our King. May we remember that all that we have and all that we are comes for you, comes from you. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.